Today, I will be talking to you about churn. So, what is churn? Annette France, the CEO of CX Journey, believes one needs to clarify the present to decide upon how things will shape up in the future. Whether you come from a B2B or B2C system, all of us are familiar with this fly in the ointment churn, and you can't fix this unless you understand what churn is. Churn may sound like a nightmare to those who haven't RTFM. To understand why customers are leaving, one needs to understand human emotions, customers' behavior, and some bit of data analysis. And finally, if there is a poor retention, then it is time to raise the alert. It is important to investigate why churn happens. When I began my career, I used to wonder if churn is too complicated to understand. Well, the good news is that it is not if you know the root causes of churn. Some of the reasons customers quit are negative experience with a business, a poor product market fit, lack of great messaging and branding strategy, or even a customer credit card expiring. Let's dive slightly deeper into why customers may leave a business. Clearly, in most cases, the culprit is a gap, either a communication gap or a product market misfit. If it's the former, then you have to focus on your messaging. Plus, both your employee morale and customer satisfaction have to be better halves to each other. When employees respond with enough empathy, it starts reflecting in their conversations as well as with customers. The enthusiasm and hospitality just come naturally. This healthy response translates into helping customers resolve their problems. In the latter case, which is a gap in the product market fit, it's all about working on your product or service offerings. If churn is such a critical factor impacting SaaS businesses, why is it not spoken more often? Churn becomes a hot topic for a business when the monthly recurring revenue, or MRR, shows a significant fall. The MRR gets hit by two kinds of churn, customer churn and revenue churn. So let's understand what these two are. What is customer churn or customer attrition? Customer churn, also called rate of attrition or customer attrition, is the number of customers who stop using a product or service in a given time frame. The reasons for this kind of churn are mostly to do with inferior products not matching up to business requirements, attracting incorrect customer segments, poor customer support, and frequent downtimes. All of this points to a bad UX, and the aftershocks of customer churn are felt even long after the customer leaves because they decided to drop negative reviews on sites like G2. So your prospects are going to be reading these. It is good to avoid this chain of responses as far as possible. Though it may logically seem wise to think that revenue churn or revenue goes away due to repercussions of customer churn, this won't be a fair statement to make. But before that, let's quickly look at what revenue churn is. What is revenue churn? Revenue churn is the sum of lost revenue, which could be due to downgraded subscriptions or churned customers, or even a combination of both. Since revenue churn derives from multiple elements, there are insufficient grounds to establish that customer churn always causes revenue churn. In the beginning, I said churn is not difficult to understand if the root causes are rightly spotted. Similarly, churn is not complex to calculate either if you look at the right metrics. Since we're considering accurate metrics, let's also quickly glance at precisely what they are. CAC or customer acquisition costs is something any business would incur during a business lifetime. It is usually five times higher than retaining an existing customer. So, your odds of selling to an existing customer are between 60 to 70%. For new customers, that figure drops to 5 to 20%. In short, you're better off ensuring that you don't let your customers churn. When we talk about new and existing customers, the payback period is an important metric that needs to be on the tab. To understand what that payback period means, let's dissect this measure, Customer Acquisition Cost, CAC. The term customer acquisition cost is self-explanatory. Every healthy business understands that acquiring customers comes with a cost. However, it's essential to put a cap on this expense. 
CAC is the average cost incurred by the company to acquire a customer. So any price incurred to acquire a customer gets added to CAC. It will never be enough to say calculations need counting from the roots. Any expenses incurred at any stage have to have records. Total sales and marketing spend includes two types of expenses that need to be under CAC, blended expenses and costs paid. Blended expense accounts for all the invisible and intangible expenses for customer acquisition. Paid expenses are the ones spent on paid channels like Facebook, Instagram, or similar media. A sum of blended and paid CAC should add to total sales and marketing spend as a rule of thumb. So, CAC is the total sales and marketing spend for a given period divided by the number of customers you acquired in that time frame. Let's circle back to the payback period. The payback period is the amount of time taken to recover CAC, i.e. the cost inferred to acquire a new customer. When we talk about churn, we should be interested in how long it will take for the business to earn back the CAC from a customer. Let me elaborate on this with an example. So there's this customer who signs up for a $25 per month plan. If the CAC for the SaaS company is $200, it will take a customer eight months to pay back the cost it took to acquire them. I was wondering how this happened. It is $200 divided by 25, simple math. So this business needs to ensure that they can keep the customer without churning for at least eight months to recover the CAC. After that, any revenues they make are over and above the cost they spent to acquire that customer. Now, here's where you need to think about how much revenue your customer brings on an average, CLV or Customer Lifetime Value. What is CLV? Customer Lifetime Value. CLV, Customer Lifetime Value, is the average revenue earned by the company during the account lifespan before the customer churns. Now that we have two exciting metrics, CLV and CAC, we can infer another insight from these two. I'm going to divide CLV upon CAC. This ratio will tell you if you can recover CAC through the revenues earned from the customer. If CLV CAC is one, it means that you're making just about enough revenue from your customers to recover your CAC. If CLV CAC is less than one, then this has to get your alarming bells ringing because you're not making enough revenues from your customers. And you're spending more than what you get from them. So either you find a way to spend less or increase your income. Ideally, CLV CAC should be three, which must be considered a standard in the industry. So how do you use these metrics together? Let's assume there's a SaaS business that has a CLV, CAC ratio equaling to three. If the payback period of the business is 24 months, and if they feel that it's too late and too long to recover the CAC, there are two insights here. One, customers have to stay longer to pay back the CAC. Two, customers are indeed staying back to cover the CAC, which is why their CLV is high. It can still be a risk for the business because you're in the impact zone if the CLV reduces. So in such a scenario, you might want to tinker a little bit and ensure that the payback period compensates faster. You might want to play around with the pricing plans in this case. While we are at CLV, let me leave you with these three points. Number one, when you lose a customer, you just don't lose the monthly subscription amount that they pay. Number two, you're going to lose the cumulative sum of all revenues that are going to come from them. Number three, and guess what? They could upgrade to a higher plan midway, so you lose those upgrades revenue as well. 